Hi everyone, this is Khalid from Better Explained, and I have a new article today. I thought it'd be kind of neat to have a screencast to go along with it, just because it's very visual and uh, some of the concepts are a little bit easier to talk about when you can show things happening versus just reading about them. So just at a high level, this is about Euler's theorem, which is one of the most famous ones in math. Um, it gives rise to this identity, e to the i pi equals negative 1, and that just seems mind-boggling. And in fact, it did boggle a lot of minds back in the day. People thought that it would just be impossible to understand intuitively. But really, there is a way to look at it that makes it make sense. And the key idea here is to build on analogies that we already know. So rather than looking at this and seeing e and i and pi and just trying to combine them all together, you really need to step back and say, okay, can we find analogies about how this process comes to be? And so for me, the analogies that helped um, are the following. First, I like to see multiplications as not just this static thing, but it's a transformation. So when you multiply, you're changing a number. You're stretching it out or shrinking it if it's you know by 0.5, for example. Or if it's by i, you rotate it. So multiplications, they work on something. They take something and they, they move it around. So I really see these, uh, these numbers being on the number line as being transformed. Uh, the next insight is to see exponential growth is what it really is. It's constant, continual growth. So you have a number and it's constantly moving. Every instant, every microsecond, it's being changed by this exponential growth. The neat thing though is that for imaginary exponential growth, rather than being pulled along in the same direction, you're actually being rotated. And we'll get to that in a second. The next thing is actually understanding what radians mean. So this is a big thing for me. We have degrees and radians, and this formula is actually in terms of radians. And the neat thing about radians is that it's from the perspective of the mover. So when you're spinning around, instead of looking at the person in the middle and saying, oh, how far did I move my head? We don't care about that. We're asking how far did the item itself, did the particle, did the, did the mover actually go? And so uh, that exponential growth that we have that's turning us, it's telling us how far we're going, and that's why it's in terms of radians. And so if we can combine these analogies together, we can kind of get a feel for what e to the i pi might actually mean, and we can actually answer some cool questions like what i to the i might mean. So just jumping down here, uh, the, one of the core concepts is that there's two ways to traverse a circle. The first is to kind of use this very linear grid system. So if you want to get to this point here, we can go across and up, and that's the method using sine and cosine. So cosine is across and sine is up and down. So basically, that will give us coordinates um, on this grid. Or the alternative is to actually try to rotate. So if we can actually go out and rotate up, we'll get to the same point, but we took a different path. And that's what the e to the i pi side is doing. So the e to the i pi or e to the i x is trying to rotate us this way, and the cosine and sine is trying to bring us up in this kind of linear fashion. And the cool thing is that with imaginary numbers, we can actually represent this two-dimensional point. So we have a real dimension and an imaginary dimension. So cosine x is the real part, and i times sine x is the imaginary part. The next idea is to imagine what imaginary growth means. And this is kind of tricky, but real growth, I always imagine it as pulling my number across. So I have 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. It's increasing, it's increasing, it's being pulled. And each pull is making it go faster and faster. This is a little bit different. With imaginary growth, instead of being pulled in the same direction, we're always being pulled perpendicular. So we're going this way, and suddenly we get a hit to go upwards. And then we get another hit to go sideways. So these uh, hits, or these... This interest, actually, this imaginary interest doesn't actually keep pulling us faster and faster because each time we get it, it's in a different direction, so it never accumulates. And so that's one of the big differences, that with regular exponential growth, we get more and more, but with imaginary exponential growth, we only rotate. So in fact, you don't rotate any faster, you just end up going in a circle, and you don't spin off the circle. Um, now, there's some details that you can read in the post, but basically, the idea is that you can see this imaginary interest is sort of rotating us. So we actually end up staying on a circular path even though we're technically having exponential growth. Um, so getting all that uh, you know, into our brains, how can, we, how can we try to make sense of some of these numbers? So for example, e to the i, e to the i power, that's such a weird, weird exponent. But one thing we can do is say, okay, what does it mean? e is just our base and we use it as a base of growth. I in the exponent means whatever interest rate you had, rotate it. So instead of growing the same direction that you wanted to, start growing up. And how long do we grow for? Well, there's actually an implicit one there. It's really e to the i times one. So the, the i here is telling us just to rotate instead of going straight, 
and then the times 1, which you don't see, but it's really there, e to the i times 1 power, that's telling us how long to go for. So we're really going for one unit of time. So at one unit of time, we'll go basically the, the size of i, or, or one unit, along the circle. So if we have a circle, we'll go one unit this way. And that's where the radian comes in. So a radian is really the distance moved. So e to the i means that you travel one unit along the outside. And if you travel one unit, you can put it back into the grid system by using cosine and sine on it. So cosine of 1 and i sine of 1. And that gives us 0.54 and 0.84i. But basically, uh, we can take that one unit of distance and convert it into a grid system, or we can just keep it in terms of the uh, exponent as e to the i. So it's kind of a neat thing, is that we basically said e to the i, okay, it means that you go one unit, because it's implied, one unit around the circle. Cool. Now the next example, how about 3 to the i? Ooh, it's kind of a little bit more tricky because we're not using e, but we can always convert uh, any number into its kind of e format. So 3 is really e to the natural log of 3. Basically we're saying, how long does it take to get to 3, assuming that we're starting at e? And that answer is natural log of 3. So basically, uh, by the way, that's about 1.1 or so. So if you take e, raise it to about 1.1, you'll get 3, and then you start rotating the growth. So the idea is that rather than starting from e, we need to get to 3 first. So that means we have to have this natural log of 3 kind of factor there. But then we start going around the circle. So rather than going 1, we're going natural log of 3 around. So it'll be a little bit more than before because it's 1.1. And when we plug it in, we see that we're a little bit higher, 0 0.89 versus 0 0.84. And we're a little bit closer to the middle. So it's 0.45 versus 0.54. So again, the idea is that you take your number, see what E would have to do to get there, but then, oh, oh, you're going to be rotating instead of growing normally. So whatever that growth would be, you have to kind of apply it along the outside of the circle. Okay, next example, I to the I. Oh, it's kind of crazy and, uh, you know, it's really confusing to think about if you don't have the right analogies. So let's think about the first part, the bottom I, this first I here. How do we get that? And one thing you can say is, okay, we start at 1 and we want to start growing. How do we get to I? Well, I is straight up. So if you want to get 1 and turn it into I, we just need to grow 90 degrees. But we're not doing it with degrees, we're doing it with radians. So how far do we have to move? Well, we have to move... If the whole circle is 2 pi, half the circle is 1 pi, and then up here is pi over 2. So pi over 2 will take us to i. So you get this kind of weird relationship where i can also be reached by saying, okay, e to the i times pi over 2. So you can go straight up directly, just plain i, or e to the i power and pi over 2 will bring you up there. So these are actually the same thing. It's kind of weird, but they are. Now, the next thing is to say, okay, we have i to the i. What does that mean? Well, we take that normal growth that we're going to do, that normal i pi over 2 growth, and we want to change it. So instead of doing i pi over 2, we have to multiply that by i again, because that's what the top exponent does. So we're saying pi over 2 i times i is what we really want. So instead of growing up like we thought we were, we're actually going to grow, well, pi over 2 i is up, and multiplying again, we get negative pi over 2. So we're actually growing into ourselves. So normal exponential growth is like this. The first i pushes up like this. The second i, i times i, makes it negative. So instead of growing pi over 2 around this way, we're growing pi over 2 into ourselves. That's crazy. And we actually stay in the real numbers because we're growing in. So we're starting here and we're just growing in versus growing out. So we actually end up shrinking. So we have e to the negative pi over 2 which is around 0.2. And then we have a couple more examples here as well. I don't want to jump into it too much, but basically, if you look at Euler's theorem in terms of these analogies, it can start to make sense, start to really click. And really, the idea is that you can take any point and, t and get there by two paths. So this is kind of the high-level picture that I see with Euler's theorem, is that any point, you can sort of take your grid coordinate, or you can grow and rotate. And... Those two approaches uh, are more useful in certain situations than others, but they lead to some really cool identities. So again, the whole idea is don't let this thing be a magic spell to you. Really try to internalize it, and at a high level, see it as just two ways to describe same endpoint. You can get here by using a grid system or by moving out and rotating. Happy math.